Give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. So I have a question for you guys. When I was covering Little Witch Academia on In A Minute, did you ever notice that when the show was being funny it was great, but the parts where the show gets really dull and uninteresting are where it tries to be action? I hope you did, because this entire video was written with the assumption that the viewer saw this happening. So as I said early on, I was already aware of the fact that Little Witch Academia goes completely off the rails in the second half and accepted that when I went in, but on reflection that was still foolishly optimistic of me. I mistakenly assumed that it would do the usual 2010 Cerebus syndrome of pretending it had something to say about something vaguely related to social issues, trying to sound progressive, and in Steven Universe's case, accidentally doing a U-turn halfway through. That's not to say that Little Witch Macadamia Nut was good, quite frankly it was mediocre right from the start. What grabbed my attention was that in the first few episodes it seemed to be completely devoid of all the usual stock anime tropes that began, and subsequently stopped being interesting in, Sailor Moon. There was no grand evil plan, there was no underage girls in fetish outfits, there was no prophecy, each episode was a self-contained story about being at Hogwarts and about some idiot kid who wants to meet her favorite celebrity. Unfortunately, the only one of these tropes that stayed away was the underage girls in fetish outfits, which is still an improvement because perf pandering is the number one reason that people with self-respect and dignity don't like Japanese cartoons to begin with. All the other shit though? Oh boy, does that start piling in. Magical energy crisis, world trees, seven words you can't say on radio or TV, blah de blah de blah de blah It's all the same usual boring crap augmented by the fact that the cast changes from one boring fuckhead and her two funny friends to one boring fuckhead and three other boring fuckheads. That's actually the part that annoys me the most. The most entertaining characters in the show are actually Lote and Susie, and they get completely shafted in favor of the two teachers who can't get a sentence out without delays and Sunset Shimmer's Alolan form. Honestly, who decided that less Susie was a good idea, and please tell me they got fired over it. But what makes this different from the other shows is the responses I got. You see, when a show completely shits the bed and starts abandoning the concept of fun, the explanation I usually get is that this is really good because it's being more mature and proving that cartoons aren't only for kids because they superficially pay nod to themes that these same people will be screaming blue bloody murder about if they dared approach it directly. That's always been the irony of, say, Star vs. the Forces of Evil. The show's latest seasons have been pushing a story about privilege and racial prejudice, but they went to another dimension to do that despite Star all already living with an Hispanic family in the United States. Unfortunately, if they had stayed with a relevant and direct example to tell the exact same story, the people claiming it to be a really smart show about prejudice would be pitching a fucking shit fit and claiming they're forcing in a political agenda. But Little Witch Academia was different because the excuses I got was that it was better that the series got more into its plot because high stakes action and flashy battles is what Trigger does best. Uh, no it's not. They're terrible at action scenes. Almost all the action scenes in their shows are slow, floaty special effects blowouts that barely qualify as action scenes. Mind you, this isn't unique to Trigger. No animated TV series does action scenes well because the budget for that level of animation and choreography just isn't there. I think the Star Wars cartoons demonstrate this the best. In both Clone Wars cartoons and Rebels, the lightsaber fights tend to be really sticky as characters seem to jump from clash to clash, so you get this strange feeling of starting and stopping. There's a bigger emphasis on wide movements and a sense that the characters are just flailing at each other. Basically, they are more focused on where the lightsaber plates end up rather than how they get there. By contrast, the films have a much smoother approach to fight scenes as, with the exception of rare occasions, the blades themselves never stay locked for a very long time. The times they do means they have more impact and tend to be focused on a battle of raw strength, and at all other times the two locked in battle are very quickly moving from strike to strike, and that's what a sword fight between two people who can both predict the immediate future is supposed to look like. So you get a changing rhythm as the fight speeds up, slows down, enters down time, speeds back up again, and so on. By the way, the trailers for The Old Republic have this down to an exact science because they're shorter and have a bigger budget. This is what a flashy battle looks like. It really comes down to budget, and that's what kneecaps trigger more than anything else, because like most Japanese animation studios, they have a budget of basically nothing, and as a result, their action scenes quickly fall into a few large-scale magic spells or a few really wide strikes, and that's about it. That's not really anybody's fault, but it goes to show why action cartoons fell out of favor as the mainstream in recent years in favor of Slice of Life. It's easier to animate, and it'll age better. Drama and action generally don't mesh well with Japanese cartoons because the low-budget animation means that there's a big focus on jumping quickly from one keyframe to the next, long hangs on a single shot, panning a shot over one frame, and lip-syncing? Heh, <laughs> what the fuck is that? But I'd argue that there's one genre that Trigger is not only especially good at, but that most Japanese cartoons have always been good at. Pornography! Comedy.
You see, the stilted and jump cut heavy animation style of most Japanese cartoons is silly by nature, and thus lends itself really well to absurdity and thus to comedy. This is a big reason why the most well-remembered shows of the early 2000s emulated it so much, despite the fact that they didn't have to because they had a real budget. Comedy is built almost entirely around good timing, and the fast cuts and missing frames serves that really well. And Little Witch Androgyny was no different. The best episode of the entire damn show was one that took full advantage of all of this for the biggest payoff, and this is the reason why Susie was the best character they had, because her dry wit was only complemented by the way everything moves. Constance is another character who really shines in this regard, as because she's non-verbal, everything about her has to be communicated through animation alone. There's one scene in Stanship Takeoff where Akko looks at what she's drawing, trips, and you get a still shot of her mid-fall, and then a still shot of Constance's deadpan face like she's screaming internally. This is the best single shot in the entire show, and it's only five frames. The shot immediately afterward is a 15 second montage of Akko's terrible excuses for help that are once again all communicated in only single still images, or even then a few frames of animation. Very cheap to make, very easy to animate, very, very, very funny. The dramatic moments are often ruined by this, such as when Shiny Charmeleon and Kroiki are arguing and the tension of the whole scene is made unbearably cheesy due to the fact that Japanese animation still hasn't resolved its messy breakup with lip syncing. I generally talk about how animation is small potatoes over writing, but the writing plays into this as well. They deliberately write these action scenes with a tiny animation budget in mind, and that's where the problems start. It isn't just about the fighting, it also has to be a scene. One of the best fight scenes in history is the fight between Will Turner and Jack Sparrow in the first Pirates movie, because it serves as an establishment of their character through very little dialogue and a lot of action. From fighting around the forge to being sent up to the rafters to the ultimate win card of the fact that for all of Will's practice, Jack is a cheater, so he wins. This isn't a very flashy action scene, but it's a meaty action scene. Is there any scene in Little Witch Atlantica that does that? No, there isn't. There's a lot of Dragon Ball Z penis extension beams, particularly that freaking bow, but nothing really substantial. You know what Little Witch Macarena has in spades, though? <gasps> Akko, get away from- Scouring the world for my beloved poisonous mushrooms will be a breeze with my new powers. And I can do it all without ever having to talk to any other people. It isn't nice to kill people with such a barbaric weapon. That's right, you little imp. Why can't you be more like her? If you're going to kill someone, you should really use this. Please sign here. If you break the contract, we can't guarantee harm won't come to you. Which one of you is supposed to be the devil again? I knew you were stupid, but I didn't know you were this stupid. <laughs> ah! Why don't you do something useful for once instead of running your mouth off? What now? Huh? You're just gonna let him go? Uh, oh my, get back here! Miss Lukic? Mm -hmm. Are all of these gonna be in our next exam? Probably. Can you please fix this to me? But seeing you suffer brings me so much joy. I'm actually really excited about going through the ghost body here. Unbelievable. <laughs> Hello. I wanted to say I absolutely loved your pies. This really isn't the time for that, Susie. It must fall naturally or else it is rendered ineffectual. Huh? Oops. Ah! It has to happen naturally, okay? You can't just go ahead and pull it off. I hear ya. <laughs> ah! What's this? It looks cool! <gasps> This show is extremely funny when it wants to be, and it frustrates me that despite being some of the funniest people in the global animation industry, Trigger continues chasing action and drama. Hell, the fact that the main character is profoundly fucking stupid and never changes from that would be a great character trait in comedy rather than where Akko currently is, which is a gigantic pain in the ass. I've noticed this trend across Japanese cartoons for over a decade now. Of the two Japanese cartoons I watched as a kid, Hamtaro aged beautifully and it's still a lot of fun to watch, while Cardcaptor aged like milk. The only Japanese cartoon of the modern era I have even been remotely interested in is a slice of life cartoon about a precious babu being a precious babu and none of the industry's other bullshit. But it's not localized in English, which means I'm basically shit out of luck. Japanese animation has never done adventure stories well because they don't have the resources to actually display it. A show like Avatar would have never happened in Japan because the industry has very low budgets and too insular an audience. It had to be made with Nickelodeon's money behind it. And even then it still had to 
cut corners like it was crunch time at the Circle Factory. Action is so resource intensive that a region whose animation industry is surviving on starvation diets is just not going to be able to do it unless they get funding elsewhere. But comedy is not only something that Japanese cartoons have always been very good at, it suits their shoestring budget animation styles perfectly. A long-standing question people ask me is why I hate Japanese cartoons, and this is why. The things they're actually good at are the things they do very rarely, and if you don't want to watch another carbon copy of Sailor Moon or Dragon Ball, then you're not going to have a good time. And because I'm not a pathetic sack of human shit, the aggressive perv pandering in this medium only ever turned me off of it as I got older. I hear a lot of anime YouTubers talk about saving their favorite medium. Even diehard fans admit that they're holding on by a thread and are trying to find some way to revive it. A great place to start would be just dunking the perpetual money sinks that only appeal to a very tiny minority of hardcore fans. Maybe stop trying to convince pathetic sad sacks to hyper-consume expensive DVD packs with creepily misogynistic fetish fuel. Just buckle down, make a really good comedy series, release it in North America, and revel in the money you'd make from a funny cartoon and the fresh blood into your audience. That's basically what Crunchyroll is trying to do, suck in a new batch of viewers to generate more subscription money from people who previously avoided their service because it only supplied terrible perf pan garbage that nobody actually wanted to watch. That was ultimately the problem with Ruby. It was so in love with its tropes and cliches that it never stopped to think about if those tropes and cliches were actually good, you know, aside from just generally looking like shit. And that's the response I usually get when I complain about this stuff, especially in response to the Korra video. People tell me, oh, that's a common thing in anime. I know this is hard to grasp, but telling me that I'm right not just about a few shows, but about an entire medium is not the smart rebuttal you think it is.